Good morning. Good morning. I suppose we could take up uh, greeting one another again. You just have to reach around and say hi to one another. Uh, <laughs> we're glad you could be here again today. And uh, we again will be following our order of service as printed uh, on the screen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. God's Word reminds us of our sins and our need of forgiveness from the Lord. Therefore, let us confess our sins to the Lord and plead for His mercy. Holy and merciful Father, I confess that I am by nature sinful, and that I have disobeyed you in my thoughts, words, and actions. I have done what is evil and failed to do what is good. For this I deserve your punishment both now and in eternity. But I am truly sorry for my sins. And trusting in my Savior Jesus Christ, I pray, Lord, have mercy on me, a sinner. 
God, our Heavenly Father, has been merciful to us and has given the, his only Son to be the atoning sacrifice for our sins. Therefore, since you have called me to do so in the name of Christ and by his authority, I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. And you may be seated. So children, if I talk to you about someone who wears a crown and lots of gold and sits on a throne, well, you probably hopefully think of a king or a queen. Uh, but if I just mentioned the crown without the gold or the silver, maybe instead you'd, you'd think about Burger King. <laughs> Well, a king or a queen rules over many, many people, but Burger King, well, that, they don't actually rule over anybody. There's one other thing about a king or a queen. They have a certain kingdom, a, a, a territory that is where they uh, happen to, to rule. Well, in the case of our Lord Jesus, he too has a throne. He too rules, but it's not a certain territory. It's all over the world. How do we know? Well, he tells us all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me, to him. And God exalted him to the highest place and gave him the name that is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow in heaven and on earth and every tongue confess that Jesus is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Now, how does God the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit rule? Where? Right in our hearts. He rules in us by, first of all, leading us to see that we've sinned against the Lord over and over again. Every time we've done evil, every time we haven't done everything perfectly good. And then he convinces us that Jesus already died for the sins of the whole world, just as the Bible says. And he leads us to believe in Jesus, our Savior, who died and then rose again from the dead. So, because of Jesus, we, and because we know we believe in Jesus, we know God rules in our hearts too. And we pray that God would rule in everybody else's heart too, so that they too will believe in Jesus and be saved. Our Old Testament lesson is recorded in Exodus chapter two, chapter six, beginning with verse two. Throughout Old Testament times, the, the Lord re revealed himself more and more as time progressed. And uh, he declared to himself to Moses as the Lord, the God who keeps his promises, especially to save us from our sins through his son. We in New Testament times rejoice in the fact that his plan of salvation was carried out through Jesus Christ. God also said to Moses, I am the Lord. I appeared to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob as God Almighty. But by my name, the Lord, I did not my, make myself known to them. I also established my covenant with them to give them the land of Canaan where they lived as aliens. Moreover, I have heard the groaning of the Israelites whom the Egyptians have, uh, are enslaving, and I have remembered my covenant. Therefore say to the Israelites, I am the Lord, and I will bring you out from under the yoke of the Egyptians. I will free you from being slaves to them, and I will redeem you with an outstretched arm and with a mighty act of judgment." I will take you as my own people, and I will be your God. Then you will know that I am the Lord, your God, who brought you out from under the yoke of the Egyptians. And I will bring you to the land I swore with uplifted hand to give to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob. 
I will give it to you as a possession. I am the Lord. Since God in his mercy uh, is the provider of everything good in our lives, we praise him with the Apostle Paul as we see that God uh, owes us nothing and we owe him everything, even our own lives. So praise the Lord. Uh, Paul's letter to the Romans, chapter 11, beginning with verse 33. Oh, the depth of the riches of the wisdom and knowledge of God. How unsearchable his judgments and his paths beyond tracing out. Who has known the mind of the Lord? Or who has been his counselor? Who has ever given to God that God should repay him? For from him and through him and to him are all things. To him be the glory forever. Amen. Throughout history, the church is built on the same rock of faith in the Savior expressed by Peter. Uh, the gospel lesson is recorded in Matthew chapter 16, beginning with verse 13. Uh, please rise for the words and works of the Lord. When Jesus came to the region of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, who do people say the Son of Man is? They replied, some say John the Baptist, others say Elijah, and still others Jeremiah or one of the prophets. But what about you, he asked, who do you say I am? Simon Peter answered, you are the Christ, the Son of the living God. Jesus replied, blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah, for this was not revealed to you by man, but by my Father in heaven. And I tell you that you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of Hades will not overcome it. I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. Whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Then he warned his disciples not to tell anyone that he was the Christ. This is the gospel of the Lord. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, give us an increase of faith, hope, and love, and that we may obtain what you promise, make us love what you command. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And having heard the word of God, we confess our faith according to the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became fully human. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who in unity with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church, we acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. You may be seated. Today we turn our attention to the next portion of the Lord's Prayer. Thy kingdom come. When we consider uh, this portion, this petition of the Lord's Prayer, we uh, 
might very well think about Luther's explanation for that. And uh, let's read it together. God's kingdom certainly comes by itself, even without our prayer. But we pray in this petition that it may also come to us. God's kingdom comes when our Heavenly Father gives us his Holy Spirit, so that by his grace we believe his holy word and lead a godly life now on earth and forever in heaven. It's God's kingdom that we pray for. That kingdom, in a way, is similar, believe it or not, to the kingdom of terrorists in the world, and yet, of course, just the opposite of it. Think about it. Where are there terrorists in the world? All over the place, right? Every country, around the whole world. No doubt in ours, too. And yet, of course, there's the difference that while the devil is trying to work in people throughout the world, the Lord is working in people throughout the world. Uh, his kingdom is everywhere. Where is his kingdom located in particular? Well, the Bible tells us faith comes from hearing the message of Christ, and the message is heard through the word of Christ. God, the Holy Spirit, works through the word that he gives us, and in that word, he leads us to believe in Jesus. In fact, he even leads us to listen to the message. And then, as we realize that no one can say Jesus is Lord except by the Holy Spirit, of course we realize that it is God, the Holy Spirit, who is doing that work within us. He's the one that's working in us and working the God's kingdom, his rule in our hearts. Uh, he does so through his word, and he does so through his word in holy baptism and in holy communion as well, uh, working to uh, lead us to believe in him and also working to keep us believing in him. As he rules in our hearts, he leads us to realize we can say no to the power of the devil. We can say no to sin because God gives us that power. And we can also say yes, then, to wanting to live for Christ each and every day, to delve into his word. And the more we delve into the word of God, the more power the Holy Spirit uses through that word to, so that we can say what pleases God, that pleases me, as the hymn writer once wrote. Yet we also know that in this world, as long as we're in this world, there's always going to be that bit of a problem within us. God's kingdom isn't complete, is it? We would like so much for him to just rule our hearts, get rid of all sin, all wickedness, all evil, all evil thoughts even from our minds so that it would never rule in us ever again. But we know the other side of it, don't we? We know that despite the fact that God rules in our hearts through his Holy Spirit, Christ's Spirit is within us, we still have that sinful nature within us too. As long as we're in this world, we have to agree with the Apostle Paul, the good I want to do, that I don't do, but the evil that I never think about doing. That I keep on doing. And then again, we also at the same time recognize that through Christ, we also say with Paul, who can rescue me from this body of death? Thanks be to God through Jesus Christ. There's where the victory lies in Christ. Not in me, not in you. It's in Christ in us. Through Christ's death on the cross for our sins, God forgives us when uh, we do wrong or when we do not do right. And again, he helps us say no when we're tempted yet again the next time. As part of God's rule in our hearts, God the Holy Spirit plants a seed within us of 
pure hope and comfort and joy. We draw that comfort from God's own promises. And we know the day will come when God's kingdom will rule over us completely, when we're no longer in this world when we are with the Lord Jesus forever in heaven. That's our wonderful comfort and sure hope that we have in Christ. That we will also then reign with him forever. But that makes us so overjoyed by the fact that we have this, even here and now, that we also pray that he will rule in the hearts and lives of others as he rules in ours. That uh, he works out in several different ways. First of all, through our witness. He leads us to want to tell and to tell others about Jesus. Not only our Savior, but theirs too. He leads us to want them to be saved just as much as we ourselves are saved and know so. And that also includes bringing the good news of Jesus not just to those people out there somewhere, but to even our own children, that they in turn will tell their children about Jesus. As we teach them to sing, Jesus loves me, this I know, for the Bible tells me so, so then we want them to also teach that to their children and turn and pass it on. We pray that they would also, and we encourage them to consider being pastors or teachers or staff ministers to get involved in the church in one way or another as well, to witness for Christ no matter what. And then, of course, he, we also do so through our offerings. We, we sometimes think, oh, well, that's the only way that I could possibly help. Well, hey, that's no small thing. You know, each one of our churches, our own church here, over 125 years old, our church is still a mission church in many ways, is it not? It's still working through our offerings. We are still operating a congregation that reaches out to other people. And in the process, we're a mission church. We have the mission of spreading the good news of Jesus around the world, even here in our own neighborhood as well. And you and I know that that isn't just restricted to our church here because our church also re keeps part of our own budget that of giving to missions, quote, unquote. Well, what, what do we give to when we give to missions? Well, we give to support congregations that are just growing, that are little churches uh, right here in the United States. In fact, you know, the, the churches that we help uh, start here in the United States, even when they're little children themselves, they're already taught to raise offerings, not just for their own church, but for other churches as well. That, that the mission work will get done somewhere else besides just where they are too. And so we have mission congregations in in the United States and in Canada, uh, much the same as Shepherd of the Bay Lutheran where I, that I helped start in uh, Lusby, Maryland uh, for quite a few years. Uh, and then, of course, we have mission work that we do around the world in foreign lands as well. Uh, we, we might very well think of some of those uh, in, in Africa and uh, Russia, and uh, in Latin America, uh, and uh, I believe it's, uh, we're reaching out to 13 countries these days, uh, specifically, uh, that have asked for our help as well. And uh, we give to those missions in, in the hope and prayer that they will also grow to tell still others uh, about our Savior. Uh, while the numbers within our own synod here in America have dropped over the past number of years, 
Our outreach has actually grown to the point where uh, our mission efforts are nearly or about half again as big as the, our synod here in America. Uh, so uh, God is at work. God, the Holy Spirit, is spreading it. And when we give to our mission dollars, we also give to help train future pastors and teachers and staff ministers and evangelists, uh, etc. Uh, and so we maintain Martin Luther College in New Ulm, Minnesota, and Wisconsin Lutheran Seminary in, right here in Mequon, oh, only an hour or so away. You should go over there sometime and see that wonderful facility we have. And, and then, of course, there's Michigan Lutheran Seminary. That's a prep school uh, that trains uh, future pastors and teachers to go on to the college, as well as Luther Prep. Uh, Michigan Lutheran Seminary is in Saginaw, Michigan, and Luther Prep is right here in Watertown, Wisconsin. And so if you haven't been there, that would be a good spot to take a look to at our uh, training schools. And just this week, I heard of another mission opportunity. You know, I said to one of you just uh, this week, uh, Thy Kingdom Come is about as close as we're going to come to a mission festival this year. And, uh, and if you recall that in our budget, we not only budget a regular amount for work that can be done locally uh, through and, and around the world, uh, we put a, about a tenth of our entire budget uh, going to uh, missions. But we also then top that off with another offering to missions. Uh, you, you have in your offering boxes, you have four different times where there's a special uh, mission offering envelope. I'd encourage you to use that uh, in the next couple of weeks here, specifically for one purpose. For Amazing Grace Lutheran Church of Roscoe, Illinois, I just that the very next day I got in the mail an appeal from our district mission board that we would use our mission dollars, our mission offering specifically, to help them. Because, you see, they've been meeting in temporary facilities. I believe they've been meeting in a school. And now, due to the COVID virus, they've been told they can't meet there anymore. And so... They're left all of a sudden with trying to find another place to meet and whichever place they find is going to cost them a lot more money than what they had projected that it would. So that we're really being encouraged to give to our own local mission just uh, not so far from here within an hour's drive uh, of, of here uh, as a way to support missions locally as well. And of course, we also use our prayers as a way to spread God's kingdom. We pray that God would guard and keep our missionaries around the world and here in the United States and Canada as well. We pray that their attempts at bringing God's word to others will continue to have success. We pray that even through the tragedies and sicknesses and even through the violence that's been going on, that people wake up and realize just how really important it is that they repent of their sins and turn to Jesus Christ for the forgiveness that you and I need and they need as well. And then, of course, we pray that they will share heaven with us forever. Since the Lord himself wants us to pray, we know that he will also grant this petition. We know that it's his will that his kingdom will come, that it will be established. And keep in mind, he is able to do immeasurably more than all we can ask or imagine according to his power that is at work within us. Now, just think about that. You know, I can do a lot of dreaming. I could dream that this congregation would double in size in five years. And you all say, well, yeah, right, as if that's going to happen. Wait a minute, wait a minute. 
That's dependent on the Lord, right? It's not dependent on you or me. So since he's able to do more than I can even imagine, pray big. Why not? He grants the increase. He's the one that works in people's hearts and souls. You realize our congregation shows many signs of growth since the COVID virus started? You know, speaking of our own congregation here, there were those that said, even before I came, well, this congregation is on its way out. We might as well admit it. We might as well just face the facts and let it slowly die. You know how come our congregation is growing? It's not what you or I can do by ourselves that's going to matter. It's what we can do with the Lord's help, with his power, with his ability. His kingdom will come, whether it's here or whether it's somewhere else. We're growing in numbers very slowly, granted, but we're growing in numbers. We are at the very same time growing spiritually because God is able to do more than we can ask or imagine in our own lives as well as in the lives of our whole congregation. And he can do the same thing in Africa and Asia and Europe and South and Central America or in Kenosha or Minneapolis or Chicago or New York City or even right here at home. He can and will do as much to make sure his kingdom comes no matter what. And you know, remember as I started this, as we pray thy kingdom come, we pray that God's kingdom will come within us as well, that it will work in us. It has done so through holy baptism. It also continues to do so through God's word. The Holy Spirit leads us to that. And it also comes through holy communion. Holy communion is given to strengthen all that kingdom within us. Jesus comes and communes with us by giving us his own body and blood in and with the bread and wine of Holy Communion for the forgiveness of sins. And where there is forgiveness of sins, there is also life and salvation as well. Now, as we have Holy Communion, we also know we're not supposed to give it to just anybody because, first and foremost, they need to be sorry for their sins. If they're not sorry for their sins, we're not even supposed to announce forgiveness to them. Not until they repent. And so it is with the Lord's Supper as well. What's more, we're told we're not supposed to give it to somebody who doesn't recognize that the Lord's body and blood are in and with the bread and wine of Holy Communion because if they don't recognize that the body and blood of the Lord are there, then they sin against the body and blood of the Lord instead of receiving forgiveness for their sins. They receive it to their soul and body's harm instead of for their soul and body's good. The Lord gives all of this in the Lord's Supper. What's more, secondly, Holy Communion isn't only a communing with Jesus and us, but it's also a communing with each other. There's one loaf, and so we are one loaf. We're one body. And so we express that unity of faith with one another as we also commune, and that's another reason why we commune those of our fellowship specifically. God works in and through the Lord's Supper, through holy baptism, and through specifically his word to assure us all our sins are forgiven 
we have that to depend on, to draw comfort in, and also pray that that same kingdom that he's working within us will be worked in many others as well. May God's kingdom continue to spread in us and around the world. Amen. And the peace of God, which passes all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. We sing. blessings which we receive from your hand, the beauties of creation and the bounties of the earth, the joy of life and the pleasure of friendship, the good of work and the gift of rest, the privilege to share happiness and sorrow with one another. Above all, we praise and thank you for your saving word and for your son's body and blood which you give us to eat and to drink in the sacrament. Through these means of grace, you send the Holy Spirit into our hearts and unite us to Jesus and to the whole Christian church on earth. Great God and Lord, without your continuing help, we easily waver in our faith, lose courage, and grow careless in our watchfulness. The times and days are perilous. Give us strength to face the evils of each day with fresh confidence. Open our lips to speak of your grace and move us to use the gifts that you give us 
to share your word of salvation with people, all, with all people. Protect and prosper the family, the school, and all good institutions that you have established for the benefit of society. We pray for our United States government and municipalities. In these days of trouble, we especially need it to remain strong so that it will protect and keep us all. Be with all our leaders so that they guide us in the best possible way to maintain our democratic republic and the freedoms we have. Remember in mercy those who are sick and suffering and bring your healing to troubled homes and lives. Move us to pray for those in need and to help them with these times. Lord, we give you thanks that you have heard the prayers of your people and have brought Richard Batani safely through surgery this week. Be with him and help him soon recover that he may also praise your name for all your goodness. And hear us, Lord, as we bring you our private petitions. Now, eternal God and Father, keep us in the saving faith and so enable us to overcome all things through our Lord Jesus Christ, who has taught us to pray, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Praise to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. In love he has blessed us with every spiritual blessing. He sends his Holy Spirit to testify that we are his children and to strengthen us when we are weak. Now have come the salvation and the power and the kingdom of our God and the authority of his Christ. To him who sits on the throne and to the Lamb, be praise and thanks and honor and glory forever and ever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night he was betrayed, took bread. And when he'd given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Then he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it to them, saying, drink from it, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is poured out for you for the forgiveness of sins. Do this whenever you drink it, in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Let us pray. Oh, and... May this, the true body and blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, strengthen and preserve you in the true faith unto life everlasting. Go in peace. Hear the prayer of your people, O Lord, that the lips which have praised you here may glorify you in the world, that the eyes which have seen the coming of your Son may long for his coming again, and that all who have received in his true body and blood the pledge of your forgiveness may be restored to live a new and holy life through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look on you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Amen.